Skip it up and that up. First off, I got to give a huge shout out to Pat, the NES punk, and their show, The Completely Unnecessary Podcast. I was watching one of their episodes. It's how this came to my attention. Uh, make sure you check out Pat's channel below in the description. He has been doing he's been doing YouTube videos for way longer than even I have. He does excellent, excellent work. I strongly suggest you subscribe to Pat, the NES punk's channel and check out the Completely Unnecessary Podcast because I enjoy the hell out of it. It's like the only podcast that I listen to and watch. Anyway, so they brought this to my attention, and let me explain to you the premise first before I show you a, a video clip from Rooster Teeth. Uh, Jeff Gertzman is a video game journalist that has been around for ever, like before like YouTube has been a thing, or he's been doing video reviews and reviews for ages. I remember watching like his Grand Theft Auto Three review from a long time ago. Point being. He's always known for telling it how it is. As a matter of fact, his review, I believe, of either Kane and Lynch or Kane, I think it was the original Kane and Lynch, um, actually got him fired from one of his previous jobs because they had advertisements. The website that Jeff was working for actually had an endorsement deal with Eidos or Eidos. I never know how to say that publisher's name. Uh, he gave an honest review, didn't really like the game. The website he was working for was pissed off at that. They were like, how dare you actually be honest? We're being sponsored by them. We wanted you to lie. And he lost his job. So he's become legendary for telling it like it is about games and reviewing them honestly, even if it's detrimental to himself. So he's fairly legendary in the gaming industry. Well, Jeff now works for his website, Giant Bomb, and he reviewed Fallout 4, and he gave it two scores. Uh, he gave the console versions of Fallout 4 for the PS4 and Xbox One a 3 out of 5, and he gave the PC version a 4 out of 5, okay? Because the PC version, it runs better, yada, 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 so on and so forth. Well, Rooster Teeth, uh, they weren't too thrilled with the fact that he didn't blatantly kiss the game's ass, because honestly, a 3 out of 5 and a 4 out of 5 are not bad scores at all. And they politely ripped Jeff a new asshole because he didn't suck Bethesda's metaphorical cock. Here's a clip of the video where they're bitching at Jeff. Take a look. Okay, so I have a bone to pick, and it's people who review shit low, because I feel like people do that to be like, eh, we're different. Yeah. Everybody get Fallout 4, 90s and up, 70. Yeah. Like, you're not different or special just because you review a game low. Look, we have legitimate things to say, and if we don't rate it low, you won't know how legitimate they yeah, are. Yeah, nobody will what? come to our site to look at it. No, like, totally oh, another 90, like, whatever. Yeah, pe people, uh, especially especially before the game came out, people were jumping on like that negative bandwagon, which is why I started, one of the first things I started talking about this episode was I feel like the bugs and the negativity is really overblown. Like people are like, and that's like what people are making a stand on to try to stand out. Like, oh well, we're different. We yeah. know, we have a, a more uh, keen eye than the average reviewer. Like people were jizzing all over Jeff Gerstmann and Giant Bomb because yes, like, they like called out all the problems. In they the were game. like, it's a technical mess. Yeah, it's like, oh, thank you, Jeff Gerstmann, for keeping it real. We, we sipped and so wine real. and ate cheese on crackers as we wrote our review. Yes, yeah. we're on the my elite. mixler. First off, I must have missed the memo. When in the name of a wrecked fuck. Did a three and a five and a four and a five become bad scores? Those aren't bad scores. He's saying the game is good, but it has issues. It has technical issues. And he's not wrong. I was playing Fallout 4 on the PC. I haven't played that much of it on the PC. And when I would go to the terminals, whether the ones where you could hack or just the regular computer terminals that you go to in Fallout 4, my character physically got stuck, like, at the terminal. I couldn't get back out of the terminal. Like, he was, like, half inside the terminal, and I physically was just stuck in there. And I ha it, it was a game-breaking bug. I had to go back to my last save and play that part over again. So he's not wrong. On the Xbox One, I've watched someone in my house, they're playing the shit out of Fallout 4. They're like probably like 30 hours or 20 hours into the game, at least. And I've seen the frame rate drops. There was one time he was playing the game and it just froze. It froze for like 30 seconds. And then all of a sudden it just started working again. This is on the Xbox One. So they're there. Jeff's not lying. Why is it blasphemous that he's making a big deal about the bugs when the bugs are annoying? 
Like, how dare he actually give an honest, unbiased review? Jeff, you bastard. And now to the point they were trying to make saying, oh, people give popular games, they get high review scores, a low review score, so they, they get traffic and ad revenue and all that, and people pay attention to them. It's Jeff Gertzman. He's been doing this before, like, 99% of the people in this fucking industry. Everyone knows who he is in the gaming industry, basically, and he's been doing it forever. Everyone knows Giant Bomb. It's a successful website. He doesn't need to do this shit to get views. So your whole... I could see if he was like a 19-year-old kid who had like a fledgling YouTube channel who gave Fallout 4, you know, a mediocre review because he was, you know, he was a young guy trying to get his name out there. Jeff's a fucking veteran. And I'm not sitting here trying to brown nose. I'm just stating facts. Jeff has been doing this for like almost two decades. I think maybe even longer. He doesn't need to like, you know, try to impress people and give a popular game that's getting critical praise a negative review to get attention he already has all the attention he needs he's successful he's fine he's not doing it for that reason that was such a stupid point it's just funny to me that it seems like there's a lot of people that come to defensive games like this they, they oh they're big open world games they take forever to make they can't make them perfect I'm not saying that it, it isn't a feat to make these games and create them. I know games like Fallout 4 are an epic undertaking to create. It, it's mind-numbing thinking the hours and effort and time that must have went into making Fallout 4. But like I've said again and again and again, one, bugs shouldn't be excused ever because there here's what you can do you can delay the game and not try to rush it out to be ready for christmas there's this thing called delaying your product to make sure it comes out and it comes out and it, it works right and it's a quality product yes i know that bugs happen and things happen but if you take more time because you are undertaking a huge product project like fallout 4 the game will work better because you've taken more time to try to address. I know, I know a game like this, it's tough to make it perfect because it's so huge. But if they saw these bugs, like the performance issues that the PS4 and Xbox One were having, and they took this and said, hey, the game runs sometimes like 20 frames per second, which uh, if you watch Digital Foundry videos uh, where they actually do a frame rate test in the console versions, you'll see that, then they could have just said, okay, we're going to wait to address these issues and fix them. We're going to delay the game so when it comes out, it performs well on both the PS4 and Xbox One. But they rushed it. And everyone's gives it, giving them a pass on it. And if anyone questions the authority of Bethesda for bringing out a game with a bunch of bugs in it, how dare you? It's People are overblowing these bugs, so on and so forth. Like I said before, I was watching someone playing shit tons of hours of the game on Xbox One, and it froze, like it straight up froze for about a half a minute. So no, the issue shouldn't be overlooked. Jeff's not wrong for doing that, and he's not doing it for attention because he's been doing this shit for years. People know who he is. And it's funny that they're saying this as they're, like, kissing Bethesda in full of Four's ass while they have Pip-Boys on their hands. And from what uh, Pat and Ian were saying, they've been, like, pushing Fallout 4 hard before it was even released. So more than likely, they were endorsed by Bethesda, or Rooster Teeth was endorsed by Bethesda. So, of course, they're going to white knight for him. It is what it is, man. I mean, if it was anyone else, I would have given them more of a benefit of the doubt, being like, okay, it's a new reviewer. Maybe they were trying to get attention by giving Fallout 4 a, God forbid, a decent score instead of, you know, an amazing 90 or like a 5 out of 5. But here's a guy who's been around for ages. He's just telling it like it is. You don't have to agree with him, but don't say he's doing it trying to get attention or to get his name out there because that's a crock of shit. This is Richard Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one.